basis. I dominated, play hard. Uh, right now I'm missing the back of I got the chicken, I got the salad, I got the rice. But right now I'm just missing the back of
to make sure we bring in some other people. This guy is stuck in traffic. And if anybody knows about traffic, it's me. I commute, and I always, all of you do a lot of times. We know that you can get stuck in a terrible situation on the 10, 405, whatever. Next, our special guest would be Kareem. Mark Madsen to dance. Sorry, Mark. They told me to give you their appreciation for how you took care of the children of Los Angeles, highlighted every year by playing Shaka Claus during Shackmas. They wanted me to remember the 2000 playoff game, seven, against the Portland Trailblazers. them wanted me to convey their gratitude for bringing your once-in-a-lifetime talent and larger-than-life personality to Los Angeles, and they wish you continued success. And finally, they wanted me to tell you, yes, they can dig it. In closing, this, the, this statue will become yet another icon of Los Angeles that will be that will draw basketball fans from all over the world to come and visit and see it in person. So make sure that when you do take a picture, to post it on your Instagram or Snapchat or Twitter and include the hashtag Shaq. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Judy. Our next speaker is uh, President of Staples Center in LA Live, Mr. Lee Zeidman. Thank you, Stu. And on behalf of AEG, welcome to Staples Center and today all of you out in Shacktown. Welcome. For the unveiling of our eighth statue here at Star Plaza, I think there's not another arena in this country that can boast eight statues in front of it, and I'm almost certain there's not an arena in the country that has one that's actually hanging, hanging from its side. In 1992 and 93, when Shaq was a rookie playing for Orlando, I was the director of operations at the Great Western Forum. I watched with awe as he took down not one, but two basketball standards. First in Phoenix playing the Phoenix Suns, second in New Jersey playing the New Jersey Nets. The average weight of those backboards and stanchions back then was about 2,000 pounds. It was then I said to myself, man, I sure feel lucky that the Lakers only play Orlando one time a year at home because my stress level would certainly be high if it was any more. Three years later, Dr. Buzz and Jerry West shocked the NBA world and signed Shaquille O'Neal as a free agent. My stress level immediately multiplied 41 times as that was the number of games that the Lakers would play at home and the number of times that Shaq would actually have to take down a basket in the Great Western Forum. Now, if he had taken down one of those baskets back then, we would have had to move hundreds of people out of their seats, flip numerous seat sections, forklift in the basket, and repeat that to bring everybody back in again, all the while, while the players were standing idly by. I think today, we could convert Staples Center from hockey to basketball on the same day quicker than we would have been able to do that exercise. And I could tell you, back then, we would have made every sports show out there as a highlight that you did not want to be on. Now, nobody knew this back then, but as it neared the season, I called our operations staff together, and I said, listen, you've got to give me some kind of false sense of security here that this is never going to come down. So we decided that we were going to go in the weight room every night when we set up the baskets and take as many of the weights as possible, and we were going to open up the back of the baskets and put all those weights inside. Hopefully, it would have protected us a little bit more from those monstrous dunks. At least give me a little more comfort at sleeping at night before a Laker game. Fortunately, the eight years that Shaq played in L.A., three at the Forum and five at Staples Center, not one basket came down, even though I held my breath every time he dunked that ball because it was a sight to see. <laughs> Fourteen years later, instead of having to worry about a basket coming down from a Shaquille O'Neal monstrous dunk, I now have to worry about this statue taking down the entire Staples Center. <laughs> and I'm still not sure how we're supposed to clean it once it's unveiled. Shaq, you've touched thousands of lives during your career as a Laker, including all the men and women who worked at both venues. It didn't matter if you were a full-time or part-time employee, if you worked in operations or maintenance, guest services or food and beverage, housekeeping, ticket taking, it didn't make a difference. You greeted every employee with that infectious smile, that big hand, handshake, and at times, a big bear hug. And for that, all of us who are connected with these venues, thank you. From all of us, Shaq, congratulations on this tremendous honor. Thank you, Lee. Uh, before we get to our next speaker, I want to acknowledge some of the celebs and some of Shaq's former teammates, etc., that are in the audience. Uh, if you could just quickly raise your hand when I call your names. One can, you know, Shaq says he wants you to stand up. Whatever Shaq wants, Shaq gets. <laughs> All right, let's start with Elgin. Baylor, Dan Beckerman, Bill Burka, and the guy 
had it was lucky enough to be the, the first recipient of all the Shaq's talents, Coach Dale Brown. The better half of the Bryant family, Vanessa Bryant. Janie Buss. Joey Buss. Nicole Buss. Jesse Buss. Jordana Buss. Former player Eldon Campbell. Jim Clemens. Brian Cook. Snoop Dogg. Jenna Elfman. Derek Fisher. Rick Fox. Devin George. Boris Grant. A.C. Green. Coach Frank Hamlin. Ron Harper. Justin Hartley. Josh Henderson. Robert Ory. Mark Madsen. Slava Medvedenko. Alonzo Mourning. Gary Payton. Mike Penberthy. Mitch Richmond. Luke Rubitaille. Kareem Rush. Coach Brian Shaw. Coach Luke Walton. Jamal Wilkes. James Worthy. And last but certainly not least, Cookie Johnson. I saved Cookie for last only because uh, her husband, Magic, who is now president of basketball operations, couldn't be here today, so he sent a video for you, Shaquille. Let's watch the video. Shaq, I remember the first time that uh, Dr. Buss and Jerry West told me, hey, man, you got to go recruit Shaq and, and talk him into coming to L.A. and leaving Orlando. And I told you that uh, you would come and with your personality as well as your game, you could come and really not only win championships but take over the world because this platform was perfect for you as a uh, superstar and as a big, big personality. And you came in and took the city by storm uh, with your play, but also uh, with your personality and giving back to the community. And you did an excellent job. And you went on to win three in a row. I mean, that is truly amazing. I knew you and Bobby would do uh, something special. And uh, both of you came through and did something special for the city and for the league and for the world. And so we have uh, witnessed some of the greatest centers that's ever played that in the NBA, played for the Lakers, and you carried on that tradition of dominant big men that has
donned the purple and gold. And so, man, I just want to say congratulations. You deserve your statue. Um, you will always be remembered in this town uh, for, again, your play. And, and then, again, that big smile. And uh, I remember when you came to me and said, man, I, I want to get my jersey retired. And I, I pulled you aside and said, hey, you got to go talk to Dr. Buss and forget what happened in the past. And you went and, and, and did that. And, and now I want to just thank uh, Jeannie for making sure that you got your statue out front as well. And I just say that I'm proud of you as like a big, I'm, I'm like a big brother to you. I'm proud of what you've done in business. I'm proud of what you doing right now on TV and you, you, you got almost every commercial in, in the world but this platform of the Lakers allows superstars to do something that no other team can provide for them and uh, you took full advantage of that so congratulations big fella and from me to you you know I love you sorry I couldn't be there as you know um, I got this new job right now <laughs> I love you and tell your mom I said hello as well. So congratulations, Shaq. You deserve it. Our next speaker, uh, this guy, everybody who's played or, or still playing, this is the guy they're chasing as far as scoring is concerned. The NBA's leading all-time scorer, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Everybody, and welcome. The main reason I'm up here today is because Shaq and I have so much in common. We're both over seven feet tall. We're both dashingly bald. And both famously outspoken. Both former Lakers. We both have had active acting careers. I played the co-pilot in Airplane, the fifth floor guardian in Bruce Lee's iconic And he played Smooth Smurf in Smurf 2. And Kazaya. Both of us were suspiciously overlooked for the Academy Awards. So that's hashtag Oscars so short. Unfortunately, despite having all that in common, only one of us could be good looking. Sorry, Sean. It's exciting to see so many people here today to celebrate this momentous occasion. Some people thought the odds of Kobe Bryant showing up today were the same as Shaq taking a free throw. Yeah. <laughs> but those of us gathered here today have come, have come to honor one of the most dominating players in NBA history. Watching frustrated players swarm around all 325 pounds of a determined Shaq spinning toward the basket was like watching those tiny old biplanes trying to take down King Kong. <laughs> no player ever had to endure more physical abuse. Yet not only did he endure it, he excelled in the face of it. Publicly displaying a statue of someone is no small thing. In American society today, we reward popularity with a reality show but we recognize significance with something more, something more lasting, more inspiring, a statue. The oldest known statue in the world dates back 30,000 years. 
So for at least 30 millennia, civilizations have been honoring those people who best represent the most enduring values of their society. Michelangelo's statue of David shows the determination and faith of the biblical hero just as he's about to take on the giant Goliath. The Lincoln Memorial represents the strength and compassion of Abraham Lincoln, struggling to hold together a nation. The statue of, Mark, of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. captures his dignity and commitment to bring about a better world. Determination and faith, strength and compassion, dignity and commitment. These are the qualities our community value of our community. And those values we so built, we, we value so much that we build statues to people who embody them so they might inspire others to take on those qualities. Those who don't appreciate sports may look at statues of athletes with less awe, kind of like the lawn gnomes of, of statuary. But there's a reason all cultures venerate their sports champions and build massive arenas to watch them compete because the best athletes represent individuals who strive to become the best possible version of themselves. If there's a record in speed or endurance, they break it. They are constantly redefining the limits of what it means to be human. They face all the same obstacles, mental and physical, that others face, yet they somehow manage to overcome them in order to succeed. It's not their accomplishments that we so admire, it's their drive, their force of will, their discipline, their vision. So, when we look up at a statue of Shaq, we are reminded not just of the points he scored, the rebounds grabbed, and the shots blocked, we are inspired by the hours dedicated to practice, the determination to improve, the need to rise above his own expectations. When I look at that statue, I will not only see the exceptional athlete, but I will see the man who earned his MBA as well as his doctorate in education. I will not only see the guy who sold a lot of Pepsi and Reeboks, but the guy whose busy charity work included Toys for Tots and Boys and Girls Clubs because he grew up as a military kid going there. When I look up at that statue, I will see the kind of talented, passionate, and generous man that we've been building statues to for 30,000 years. And we all should be inspired to be our best selves. Thank you, Shaq. Purple and gold, Shaq. Why are you wearing blue? Thank you, Cap. Uh, right now, I want to take a moment to uh, recognize we talked about that statue. The statue was created at the Rotblat Amrani studio by Omri Amrani, who was here with his wife, Julie. Right here. She partnered with him on this, uh, this statue. They've also uh, partnered on some other statues, the Jerry West statue, Kareem statue. Robitaille statue, the Chip Hearn statue, hey, and the new L.A. King's 50th anniversary monument. So they need uh, a lot of rest. They've done a lot of work. All right, our next guest is uh, here after missing the opener because of uh, traffic. So I'm going to bring him to the stage right now. Uh, I don't know how to describe this guy. Mr. Laker, Mr. Logan. I don't know what you want to call him.
1996, we would have an opportunity to have a chance to talk to him about coming to Los Angeles. And at that point in time, there was a lockout. And I didn't know, know Shaquille, but I know I had a very big phone bill that summer. And conversation with you all over the place. And Leonard D'Amato, thank you for being so honest and more importantly helpful in getting Shaquille O'Neal here in Los Angeles. Uh, it's a pleasure to deal with agents like him. And through a lot of phone conversation, I felt like whether or not he was com coming here to Los Angeles, I felt like he was someone that I would really like to know personally. Who's next to him? Bobby, huh? Phil? Phil. One night, he was getting to the end of the line, and Mr. O'Neill asked for an ungodly sum of money, $150 million. And I said, Shaquille, we can't get there. I said, we will have no one here but you. <laughs> but we had done something prior to that. We'd acquired another player by the name of Travis Knight. So, so if we didn't get him, we always had a backup, Shaquille. But that night, the night he said he would come here, the late Jerry Buss, who was one of the most incredible men to work with that I've been around. I told him and I said, look, I said, I just talked to Shaquille. And he said he's coming. And I said, I said, to Shaquille, I said, you need to do one thing for me. You need to call Dr. Buss and tell him you're coming because there's one more deal that we had to, to do. And he called me, he told Dr. Buss, he said, get it done. Um, bring me one of, I guess, happy moments of my life because I think you always second guess yourself uh, when you're dealing with players of this caliber. They don't come along very often. And when he said that, I knew it was going to change the landscape of this city, but more importantly, the fortunes of the Lakers. I will tell you, his mother Lucille sitting here, Will Boyer, you look like her. That smile, I'm sure someone else up above looking down Thank my God. Um, he's here. I'm sorry. But there's two other people that are very important to me. Mike Harris and Jerome Crawford. Shaquille always aligned himself with the most incredible people that you can imagine. Behind the scenes, this was the most giving human beings I have ever seen in my life. His act of kindness for a lot of people, and you will never know, you will never know the little things he did for people. And that summer, also, there's another young man, doesn't have any gray hair yet, uh, who arrived with him. And one of the things I told him, yeah! I told him, I said, look, I said, you know, I think we have a better team fitting around you. I think you'll have a better chance to achieve your goals to win championships. Mr. Fisher was one of those guys we had that year as a rookie. We got this young guy who uh, was full of himself. And uh, one of these days, he's going to be out here real soon. Always! Always! In concluding, <laughs> in concluding, I think, for me, this is a player I most enjoyed when I was with, with him because he always deprecated himself. He was fun. He never changed. Never changed. Um, 
Jaquila, when you left here, obviously I wasn't here. It was a real sad day for me because I always thought you'd end up in your career with the Lakers. Sometimes that doesn't happen in the NBA. And in the year 1996, we bought another little bit older guy here by the name of Phil Jackson. And for three years, I had an opportunity to watch one year up close and personal. And it was time for me to leave. Um, and I could watch from a distance and say I had a small part in bringing you here to Los Angeles. And for the city of Los Angeles, Shaquille, they always loved you. Woo! Come back! I got three call, phone calls from day from some guys said, my God, I just saw this massive guy driving on the freeway with a motorbike. <laughs> You do not realize, I think, the impact you've had on people. And I'm talking about everyone. I'm not talking about Laker fans. If you know this guy personally, you want to be around him. Thank you for coming here. We're still thankful for the city of Los Angeles, for his children. Um, just a unique man. And uh, I loved him. Like I said, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, our next speaker, uh, I did introduce him once before, and uh, I think I'll use the same intro from, to think of one coach coaching 11 championships in the NBA. It's Mr. Phil Jackson. hard to pick just one. There's an introductory story in Buenos Aires, but I won't go into that. I mean, Rio de Janeiro, or was it Buenos Aires? And then he came to Flathead Lake, where I have a summer home, and that was the first meeting we had the summer of 99. I came late back to my own property, and Shaq had already captivated Table Bay. That's where I had a home. And not only was diving off the pier doing gainers, and he can't swim, by the way, <laughs> but he'd also commandeered whoever had a jet ski in the neighborhood and was doing uh, circles out in the middle of the bay. And that night performed in a hip hop show at the rodeo grounds. <laughs> So when I came back to L.A. that fall, my goal with Shaquille was to have him close down the extracurricular activities. And that's a tough part. And, uh, you know, he's a hip-hop singer, he's a movie star, and he was a childhood idol. And I tried to eliminate three and only make it one, basketball. Yeah. Early in that season, Coming off the floor in the second or third game, I met him out on the court and said, what was the greatest thing Will Chamberlain did in his career? And he said he averaged 50 points a game and 40 rebounds a game. I said, no, that's not it. He averaged over 48 minutes a game. <laughs> do you think you can do that? He said, if Will Chamberlain did it, I can do it. So Shaq played 48 minutes a game. Yeah. For how long, Shaq? <laughs> John Sally came in my office about two weeks later and said, do you think you can start limiting Shaq's minutes? 
Let's get the time. But he got Che, and he won the MVP, and he was great that year. Ever in the NBA playoffs in 2001. Dominating team. As you may know or not know, the teams a lot of times did a mindfulness session during the course of their preparations for practice, for games, for videos. Shaq sat right behind my chair and I think it's the only time Shaquille ever slept in the course of a day. His mindfulness session was a, a lot of Z's coming out of him. I'd have to turn around and say, it's all right, big fella. Get your rest. But congratulations, Shaq. This is a wonderful honor. Jamie, us family, I think it's a very much due to him. And this whole complex deserves the right to see this man as a statue because we saw him as a player. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phil. Uh, our last speaker here, uh, that's on stage at least. Kind of mad at him, but I guess I'll get over it in time. Let me introduce to you, uh, Mr. Kobe Bryant. Yeah! Oh, we! Oh, MVP! MVP! We heard a lot of stories about <laughs> what we haven't talked about is how good of a player he was. <laughs> most dominant player I've ever seen. And the thing that was most impressive to me is that he's such a fun, out, outgoing guy. Loves to tell jokes. Loves to have fun with his teammates. Practical jokes. But before the tip-off, something happens. The switch goes off of him. He's no longer joking around. He's no longer playing around. He's not smiling anymore. He's out there and he's trying to dominate. And I remember the playoff series against San Antonio. We we're going into the arena. And uh, he and I were sitting against each other in the back of the bus. And uh, he leans over to me and he goes, bring it to me early tonight. Bring it to me early. Woo! All right, what's, 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 what's going on? He said, when I was a kid, David Robinson wasn't very nice to me. <laughs> yeah! So say no more. This series is in a bag, man. That's it. That's it. Um, but I just want to say thank you. I've learned so much from you as a player. And, uh, everything that you've done for the city, everything you've done for this franchise, and uh, kids, your kids, you guys should know your dad was a bad man. He's a bad man. Congratulations, and uh, much love to you, my brother. Speaking of the kids, before I introduce the kids, we Make sure we recognize Mom Lucille, which makes it all happen. As always, it's always the moms in our life that make things possible. His sister Aisha. Oh, really? And I would like to also introduce his children and have them come up on the uh, stage. Woo! Tahira. <laughs> come on up. Miles. Sharif. Woo! Amira. Shakir. And Miara. Okay, now, which one of you would like to go first? Here we go. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome and good afternoon. My name is Tahira O'Neill. I am the oldest of Shaquille's six children. You wouldn't be able to tell the height going on behind. Yeah. I am the oldest. Before I start, I'd like to first thank you all for being here with us to celebrate such a momentous honor. It's kind of funny because for those of you who know me well, you know, it's never hard for me to find the words to say, but today I'm kind of speechless. I was born July 19th, 1996, which is 
for some of you guys, just a random date, but it was actually the day after my father signed to be a Los Angeles Laker. <laughs> so you can imagine how important, how special this moment is, not only for myself, but my family as well. My sibling and I, we spent the first years of our lives, the best years of our lives, watching our father play with the Los Angeles Lakers. Like millions of others, we had the pleasure of watching him evolve over time and establish himself as one of the most dominant centers ever to play the game. <laughs> the most dominant center to ever play the game. <laughs> and while today is a day to celebrate his on-court accomplishments, my siblings and I wanted to take some time to celebrate his off-court accomplishments as well. Dad, I think I can speak for all of us when I say we admire everything about you. Everything from your Mr. Miyagi style of parenting <laughs> to your infectious sense of humor. Both your integrity and your character are a true testament to the values your incredible parents